Good morning. Welcome to Champlain United Methodist Church on this Palm Sunday as we begin Holy Week together. Wherever you're joining us from this morning, we welcome you to this time of worship. As we begin, I just want to say a couple words of announcement about the Holy Thursday service that we are going to be doing in person this coming Thursday at 6.30 outside at the Mill Pond, weather permitting. And if in case of rain, we will be inside in the sanctuary, masked and socially distanced, regardless of the weather of the day. 
And again, we welcome you to this time of worship, and we invite you to come back for our Saturday, our Saturday, our Sunday morning celebration on Easter morning at 10 o'clock as well. Let us welcome the presence of God in our midst. Welcome the presence of our kids in our midst. And for the children's time today for Palm Sunday, we're actually going to have a craft segment. So if you need to, in a minute, I want you to pause the service to get some supplies. Otherwise, you can make this later and then come back and watch this part again. But if we were together in person, we would have palms that we'd be giving out on Palm Sunday to everyone, right? So what I want to show you is a way, does anybody have a palm tree at your house? Right, Riley, do you have a palm tree at your house? <laughs> I, I think that's a no. Julia, okay, Randy, nobody has a palm tree? Got it. So we're going to make our own palms today. So you're going to need a scissors. You're going to need just a piece of paper and some markers or a highlighter. I picked green. You don't have to, but I'm going to recommend green. And what you can do is we're going to make our own palms. So take your piece of paper, fold it in half, like I've done here. Can you see? And just like that, like you're making a paper airplane. And then take a book, a book about this thick, okay? And I want you to make some marks with your marker or your highlighter about the width of the book all the way up the piece of paper on an angle. So here's your book, like this. One, two, three, four, five, until you're all the way up the piece of paper. You see? Now, you can cut it. Once you've got that made, I'll, let me show you what it looks like. Once you've got it at an angle, you can take your scissors, cut down the middle, like the spine of the palm, and then at the angle, and your favorite shade of green, I have emerald and kiwi here, or your highlighter. And then you can take your scissors and just cut along the green lines. Can't really see, so you can see like that to make your palms. So just continue down all the way. And so when we come to the scripture reading, just going to cut a couple more. See how it's going to look? When we come to the scripture reading about the palms, you can wave your palms at home in the air when it comes to the part in the scripture where you hear the palms where we say, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Then you can wave your paper palms at home. Now, 
If you really want to get fancy, you can save these palms for our Ash Wednesday service next year when we're all together, and then we will burn them as part of the Ash Wednesday offering. So I want to see if anyone can remember that. But for now, you can just make them at home. So one more quick thing. When the crowd cried Hosanna when Jesus came into town, what, what did that mean? It's a way of saying, save us. The people were looking for a king to come and save them when the people were living under the oppressive Roman government that was doing all kinds of things that they shouldn't have been doing to, that were not the way God wanted people to live in the world. And people were living in fear. So Jesus came to show a different way to be a king. To be a king with how you treat people with love, with, with respect, and with justice. And these are the ways that we are learning from Jesus still today. So Hosanna, welcome Jesus this Palm Sunday as we wave our palms together. Have a good week, kids. Hosanna, bless this one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, bless this one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us join in this call to worship. The story of Palm Sunday tells of how people removed their cloaks and spread them out in front of Jesus as he entered Jerusalem. The cloak we wear every day to face the world is both the persona we wish to present and our defense against the elements. As we come to worship, may we be willing to lay down our defenses and disguises at the feet of the one who sees us as we really are. And then set free for worship, may we offer our praises with open hearts and lives. Amen. And we continue with the words of this morning prayer. God of ajar doors, one year ago we stayed within our homes. And now we look ahead to a world regathering. There are so many people in the stores and roads. Don't they know there's still a pandemic? And simultaneously, don't I realize maybe I should start slowly and safely reemerging as well? As the world continues to open, may this anxiety creeping up into our hearts and minds fade away. As we see the number of cars in a parking lot and people in the checkout lines, may we grasp your peace, O oh God. Help us find your wisdom in masking, in traveling, and in gathering. And let all God's people say, Amen. The Hebrew scripture lesson from Psalm 118. I thank you, Yahweh, for your goodness, for your love is everlasting. Let Israel say your love is everlasting. Open the gates of justice for me and let me come in and thank you, Yahweh. For this is the gate of Yahweh and only the upright can enter. Thank you for hearing me and saving me. It was the stone which the builders rejected that became the keystone for this is Yahweh's doing, and it is wonderful to see. This is the day that Yahweh has made. Let us celebrate with joy. Please, Yahweh, please save us. Please, Yahweh, give us prosperity now. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of Yahweh, and we bless you from Yahweh's temple. 
Yahweh is God and God has enlightened us, join the festival procession. With palm fronds and hands, go up to the horns of the altar. For you are my God and I thank you. You are my God and I exalt you. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, Yahweh, for your goodness, for your love is everlasting. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And the Palms Gospel from Mark this year. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent off two of the disciples with this instruction. Go to the village straight ahead of you, and as soon as you enter it, you will find tethered there a colt on which no one has ridden. Untie it and bring it back. If anyone says to you, why are you doing that? Say, the rabbi needs it, but we'll send it back very soon. So they went off, and finding a colt tethered out on the street near a gate, they untied it. And some of the bystanders said to them, what do you mean by untying the colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let him take it. And so they brought the colt back to Jesus, and they threw their cloaks across its back, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread leafy branches, which they had cut from the fields. And everyone around Jesus, in front or in back of him, cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is the coming reign of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple precincts. He inspected everything there, but since it was already late in the afternoon, he went out to Bethany, accompanied by the twelve. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's my privilege to welcome my colleague, Rachel Warner, one of the pastors from the Anoka United Methodist Church, back to our pulpit today to share our Palm Sunday sermon, Walk Away. Father Emmanuel Katangale, a Ugandan priest and one of my seminary professors, has been known to say, hope and lament are twin sisters walking hand in hand. This is Palm Sunday. Today we read again the familiar story of Jesus entering into Jerusalem. We use words like triumphant and parade to describe the scene in a way that expresses the hope that wells up within us when we remember Jesus, humble yet bold, riding into the crowd. The cheers and shouting, the laying down of cloaks and branches, the public recognition of Jesus as the Messiah, the one who saves. And at the same time, as if a twin sister walking hand in hand with that hope, if we look a little bit closer, we might also encounter the lament in this story. After all, the crowd is not shouting, hip, hip, hooray! They are shouting, Hosanna, which means save us, hope and lament. This is my third Palm Sunday as the pastor at the United Methodist Church of Anoka, and it is the second time we are waving our palm branches remotely or in spirit. Hope and lament, lament and hope. Every year on Palm Sunday in my entire career, I have made a joke about how we pronounce the word. Is it Hosanna or Hosanna? Can you tell I'm not from around here? And every year, I have noted the translation of the word to English. Save us. Every year, the same joke. Every year, the same rendering of the phrase. And yet, each year, Hosanna seems to carry a unique meaning as we join the shouting chorus from our present moment. Save us, Jesus. You are the one who comes in the name of the Lord. You are the Messiah, the one who saves. The excitement and the hope of Jesus coming into town to usher in God's kingdom means as much to me today as it ever has. I want to rush to the curb, lay down my branch, cheer and whistle and shout, Jesus, save us. We need you. We are killing each other. We are consumed by anger and fear. Our grief is overwhelming. We refuse to see one another, to hear one another. 
We receive the news day after day as a tool for casting blame on others. We seek arguments instead of solutions. We would rather watch our enemies crash even to our own detriment than work together toward a common goal. Save us, Jesus. We need you. Friends, this is remarkably close to what was happening in Jerusalem that day, that first Palm Sunday. Not so much a ticker tape and Tootsie Rolls parade as a resistance march. We know, and Jesus knows, how this week will end. But those who were gathered there that day, they were lining up to march with Jesus against an empire that had thrived by disenfranchising the masses. They shout and they cheer because Jesus gives them hope. They expect a Messiah who will conquer the empire and fight his way to the throne on their behalf. And this moment represents a turning point in our time with Jesus, especially as we've read through Mark's gospel. Scholar Margaret Farley notes that up until now, Jesus has cautioned the disciples and others not to say anything publicly about the great works that he has done in their presence. Insofar as anyone did understand who he was, they have been warned to say nothing of what they know or have seen. But now, in this week before Passover, Jesus decides to enter Jerusalem with full publicity, to receive the acclaim of the crowds and appear before the world as if he is fulfilling one of the messianic prophecies. We know, however, that Jesus is not the sort of Messiah that the crowds either expect or want. It makes me wonder, what sort of Messiah do I want Jesus to be? Often I find myself wondering, if Jesus arrived today in my community, would he be the kind of leader I would want to follow? Or would his teachings make me feel too challenged outside of my comfort zones? Would his miracles give me pause for skepticism? Would his refusal to stay out of politics come as an affront to my sensibilities? I think I'd be excited to join the parade and cry out for help, but would I be prepared to join the march for justice? Or would I find myself wishing Jesus didn't make me so uncomfortable. In the penultimate chapter of Love is the Way, Bishop Curry writes about the intersection of faith and politics. While he desires to stay above the fray of partisanship, he does not shy away from the difficult conversations about how what we believe as followers of Jesus impacts how we live together in this world. Specifically, he challenges his readers to see the need for love in all aspects of our lives, including the political. He says, love doesn't just belong in the public square, it is desperately needed there to break through the deadlock and make our diversity of perspectives an asset. Bishop Curry advocates for sharing our stories, for asking one another how our values and principles came to be so important to us, and to seeking out the places where our values overlap, even if our tactics may not align. He says, even more simply put, the path to love needs to look like love. Today, and in the holy days ahead, we see that the path laid out before us by Jesus is the path of love. What does love look like when we walk this walk together with one another in the footsteps of Jesus? It looks like a donkey and palm branches, flipping a table, spilling the expensive perfume, serving one another with a basin of water, eating together even as we recognize our bent toward betrayal and fleeing taking up the cross, and giving everything to the story of grace unfolding all around us. This week, as news of another mass shooting unfolded in our nation, we who watched from a distance might have noticed that in 2021, it takes mere minutes for our collective response to violence to shift away from grief and toward fighting. 
What I mean is before we've even felt the deep stomach churning grief and pain of the moment, we have already moved to fighting about who is to blame, pitting ourselves against one another and suiting up for another battle. We barely pause to lament, to release our grief and pain. Is it any wonder that we feel so hopeless? The real tragedy of our rush to skip ahead to practical solutions and political grandstanding is that lament is the place where we are far more likely to discover what it is we value together. When we pour out our stories, when we share our pain, our grief, our anger, and our fear, when we acknowledge that we don't know how to fix what is wrong in us or in our world, when we look at one another and dare to say, I don't know if my way is better than your way. I only know that this hurts too much. We are hurting and we want more than anything to find the healing that Jesus offers. I had a personal experience this week, which some of you probably shared when our community was put under a brief shelter in place order and some of our schools went into lockout procedures due to a concern about a potentially armed person fleeing from law enforcement in the area. The event thankfully was short lived, but the fear and worry were gripping even for that short time. And they were very real as I sat in my office praying for our children's safety, all of our children's safety. When the all clear came, I released my own lament. I don't believe I have all the answers, but I know that it hurts too much to live with this kind of fear. Lamenting is vulnerable. It requires us to lay bare our suffering and trust those around us to hold it with gentleness and care. Many times we would prefer to harden ourselves, bury the lament and forge ahead without risking anything. But when we stand at the sides of the street with the crowds, knowing that there is one who is greater than we are, who comes in the name of the Lord, when we release our vulnerable lament, when we cry out to Jesus, Hosanna, save us, we might begin to discover that in the place where our grief and anger and fear had been festering, there is now just enough room for hope. The hope of Palm Sunday is not the kind of hope we traditionally seek. It does not bring with it easy answers or an end to the struggle. It is hope that instead invites us to join the struggle, one that is inherently fraught with political conflict. The struggle to walk together with Jesus toward a world that more perfectly reflects God's kingdom values. Teresa Lockhart Eisenlohr notes that no political or religious dignitaries meet Jesus with flowery speeches as was customary. When he was later met by political leaders, they do not praise Jesus, but take steps to bury him. His devotees are not dressed in their best, nor do they wear wreaths of palm branches on their heads. Instead, they throw down and trample ordinary clothes and branches in the street. This is our Messiah. This is Jesus. Not fancy, not regal, not armored up for battle. Riding in on a donkey on the dusty road, opening himself to the pain of our lament and inviting us into the raw emotions and experiences of this holy week with hope in God's promised redemption. Amen. We thank you for your ongoing generous support of our ministries both here in the community and around the world through the outreach of the United Methodist Church and our own here in Champlain. We enter now into a time of offertory.
Let us join our hearts in prayer. The time has come, God. The world is in crisis. Poverty, hate crimes, illness. Spiritual hunger, fear-mongering, abuse of power, and human trafficking threaten your children in every corner of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The time has come, God. Be glorified, we pray in the fruit of righteousness born from seeds of compassion and justice. Be glorified in the work of leaders who press forward through the angry rhetoric and hate speech, through risk of danger to life and limb, through fear and trembling and significant loss. May all who are seeking find our Jesus in our work at work in the dark streets and seats of government, in violent homes and underprivileged neighborhoods, in sweatshops and border crossings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the time has come, O oh God. Overtake our egoism and pride, our selfishness and greed that rule the world. Transform us into servants worthy of the honor that comes from being known as followers of Jesus. Grant us courage to sacrifice our own desires for the manifestation of the common good, that the fruit we bear may leave a legacy for all who would come after glorifying your name for eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen.
as we go forth into this holy week. God of all hopefulness, God of our lives on this holy day of palms and passions and through this holiest of weeks, when our Lenten journey finds its completion through pain, sorrow, despair, illness, losses of all kinds, through fear, anger, hatred, vitriol, and finger pointing, through a self-examination of all the ways we work against you, against your hopes and dreams for creation, against your love poured out in flesh and blood. We hang our heads and bow our hearts, seeking your forgiveness, yearning for your guidance and desiring your compassion. Fill us, we pray, with the ability to turn to you, kneeling before your grace. Open our spirit that we may take you in, let you in, receive you in. Into our hearts and minds and souls, let you in that we might turn to you, return to you, be transformed in you, through you, by you, and for you, O God. Transformed once more this day, this week, into new selves, me, you, us, together. May we become a new people, a gentle people, a people of love and compassion, born anew from our deepest sorrow through the breadth of your forgiveness and love. And then, may we do likewise, forgive and love. Amen. Go in peace.